yesterday I was thinking about um, one year ago when I started the vlogs. I looked back at what my objective was with the vlog back then. And I'm thinking right now, what's my objective for it today? And I realized I have two objectives now. One, I have to entertain my audience back home. And two, I have to create a new audience here and entertain them as well. And they can get to know me that way. I feel like that calls for two separate series of videos. So, We are going to the Last Dutchman State Park, and man does it look beautiful online. I cannot wait to see what wonders are in there. Five miles outside of the Valley of the Sun lies an amazing work of natural art, the Lost Dutchman State Park. It sits on the edge of the Tonto National Forest, the foothills of the Superstition Mountains. Commences. One thing I haven't encountered yet is uh, scorpions. Um, they can be pretty common in places like this. There are many dangers here, as the wildlife is abundant. Scorpions seem to me much less of a problem in the Sonoran than I believe them to be, but watch out for them on these deserted hikes. The creature you'll more likely encounter is a little more familiar to me. Rattlesnakes. So why is it called the Lost Dutchman State Park? As it is considered part of the Superstition Mountains, legends and lore have a huge influence on the names of locations in the area. This park is no exception. In fact, it has a very good reason to have this name. It is named after the Lost Dutchman's gold mine, and according to legend, it is a gold mine hidden somewhere in the southwestern United States most believing it is in the Superstition Mountains. Allegedly discovered by German immigrant Jacob Waltz, who kept it a secret all the way to his grave, the Lost Dutchman's gold mine is the most famous lost mine in American history. Every year, hikers go looking for it, and some never make it out alive. That was a mistake. I got ants in my pants. Even though Montana and Arizona have different climates, I cannot help but notice the similarities between the two. Lost Dutchman State Park is but five miles from the edge of the Phoenix metro area, and its solitary atmosphere is that of, well, the middle of the desert. This is a place I would expect to find outside of a town in my home state, not outside one of the largest metros of the southwest. The amount of wildlife is astonishing. Lizards, birds, snakes, and all kinds of plant life, ranging from a common succulent to the gigantic saguaros. Although I did not expect to encounter as much danger as I did. Ah, God. So this is the first rattlesnake I've got in uh that almost got me, actually. So if you guys don't know what to do with a rattlesnake, you don't do what I'm doing right now. You check to make sure your surroundings are safe, and you back off. And you just keep going. See? It's actually following me. It's a little stalking. So, uh, you just keep going this way. That was quite startling. It was sitting there, and I was distracted by a, uh, rustling in the other side because um, it was quite big and it was sitting in the middle of the trail. I am actually quite surprised I didn't get bit by it. 
After recovering from the near catastrophe, it was time to drive to the next location. The next stop on this episode is the Goldfield Ghost Town and Mine. Um, it's just outside of the state park, and I am so pumped to see this. This is insane. It looks like it's been restored. Oh, man. <laughs> Goldfield, now known as Youngberg, was established on October 7th of 1893. This was the same year that George U. Young arrived. When the gold mines closed in 1897, the post office soon followed. In 1898, the town depopulated before a new small community developed and became known under its current name. Not much is known about it otherwise. I hope I got enough footage for that. Uh, that was amazing. I have never seen a cooler ghost town. <laughs> um, but I haven't been to Bannock either, so.